All right, guys, this is going to be part two of Project Pilot House Resurrection. Uh, and in this, uh, this video, what I'm going to do is focus on this engine, get it torn apart, see if it is something that is uh, reusable or if it's just good for a, a boat anchor at this point. I don't know yet. My guess is it's not good. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and get all the accessories off, the generator, oil filter, water pump, and all that stuff, and then we'll, we'll go to the head and we'll see how bad it is. All right, guys, I got the bucket down below the engine. I already have the uh, oil pan bolt loose. And when I pulled the plate off the oil pump over on the other side, we had water come out. So I have a feeling this is not going to be a pretty sight. Probably full water, setting all those years with no spark plugs. Uh, I hope I got a big enough bucket. This is not looking good at all. Oh my. Oh. Yeah, what a mess. What a mess. Well, if you want to say there's any good news, I think that's a magnet. No, not a magnet. So I was going to say there wasn't no metal stuck on it, but it's not a magnet. Oh my, that's not good. I can only imagine what this crank is going to look like. And the reason was, as I said before, it sat in the truck for I don't know how many years with no spark plugs in it and the hood was off so can't say I'm totally surprised I just can't imagine what the piston is going to look like and that bottom end that crank is going to look like so my hopes of saving this engine is kind of not good but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and let this drain out and uh, I'll get the water pump and everything off the front of it, get it out of the way. We'll pull it ahead and just see how bad the uh, cylinders are. All right, I got the intake and exhaust manifold off of it and it, it fought me uh, pretty good. Most of them nuts and bolts actually came out easy, but there was uh, two of them that gave me some issues. And one of them, I actually had to chisel it in half and, and uh, get it out that way. And the reason was it was rusted enough that a socket wouldn't stay on it. And it was, all as always, it was in an area that you can't hardly even get it. But looking inside, you can see she's in uh, pretty bad shape. A lot of dust, crust, and everything else in it. Um... It's just not a good sign, and the more, the farther I go, the more I realize that the chances of uh, this engine ever running again probably isn't that good. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get you up in the uh, stand, and we're going to pop this head off and look at the cylinders and see how bad they are. It's time to zip these off the rest of the way with the air impact. All right, at first I thought these were, uh, they look like nuts, but honestly they're not. They are bolts. I was wrong. But either way. If this engine is salvageable, these aren't going to get reused anyway. And now, for the moment of truth, let's see if we can get this head off and how bad it is. Uh, 
All right, guys, what do you think? I say it ain't gonna be pretty. And it is not pretty. The head, she's all, that's probably would be okay. A head gasket's still on there with the exception of the uh, spark plug holes. Those threads are pretty much rusted out from setting so long without plugs in it. And <laughs> looking at the valves, let me, uh, let me get you uh, off the stand, get you a better look at this. All right, so here's a uh, better look at it. And it is not pretty at all. Valves, every one of these valves are just caked with dirt. You have, I don't know, it looks like ashes in there. But sometimes that could actually be, and I don't, I don't know that it is, aluminum piston sometimes they uh sometimes they uh start to crude like that but i don't i don't know these may not and that's just pure rust rust and dirt and again more i don't see I'll have to clean it up because I can't tell how bad the pitting is in it. And I'm sure it's going to be pretty bad. Like this under here. And that, that's the key. If I can hone it, not hone it, if I can bore it out, you know, maybe we can do something with it. But I, I just don't know. I'm kind of skeptical because some of that seems pretty bad. And, and they are, you can sleeve them but it gets into the issue of cost effectiveness this is not the original engine to the truck as i had mentioned it is a 1950 the truck is a 53 this is out of a one ton so yeah it's uh not good so let's get i'll get you back up in the stand and we're going to roll this thing over and we'll Take a look at the bottom end and see how bad it is. But as of right now, it's not looking too good. Just from what you see, if this was your motor, would you try to save it or would you try to uh, rebuild this somehow, put new sleeves in or whatever it takes? Uh, just put it down in the comments. I'm just interested in what you guys think on that. All right, let's get this thing rolled over and start on the bottom end. Okay, got the cylinders honed out the best I could. So let's go ahead and pop off this uh, oil pan. And uh, we're getting big clumps still falling out of it. So I'm pretty sure once I pour it, it's going to be a mess. Ready for the big reveal. Oh my, what a bunch of sludge. They used a lot of uh, non-detergent oils back in the day. And uh, that's kind of what you end up with big goopy nasty stuff but I tell you the one thing I am a little happy about 
if you look at the crank, it doesn't look rusty or anything. I, I thought it was going to be all rusted out. So that's actually, you know, I'm happy about that, really. Oh. Oh, that's a seal. Okay. For a minute, I thought that was broke. The see old seals gone in it. But, yeah, that's a, that is a mess. That's all I can say. That's a huge mess in there. Look at this. A lot of it, like I said, they used to use a non a non detergent oil, and uh, that's what you get. And lack of oil changes, I guess, too. But all right, I'm uh, I'm gonna get this cleaned up a little bit and uh, turn this all the way over to rest it away, prop up the front of the engine just because it's only got the two bolts in the back, and I'm not too crazy about that setup but it is what it is and i think what i'm going to do is i have some plastic gauge and just for the fun of it i'm going to go ahead and pull a couple of these caps off and uh just use some plastic gauge to see where we're at to get like a baseline how bad it's worn out on the bearings but I obviously when i pull them off if they're just obviously junk then i ain't gonna worry about doing it all right guys this is the number five cap and if you look at that right in the center that is old dried up oil and if you look in that's the uh main the uh, journal the rod journal on the crank and if you look right in there that is completely plugged so it's no wonder that this uh engine actually failed and these caps are marked on top and bottom and the marking um if you see right here i don't think it shows up it says number five but that actually points towards the valve side of the engine or the cam side all right i haven't really been filming much of this and that's because this thing is fighting me tooth and nail every cylinder in here is seized the piston is seized to the cylinder and i was able to beat one of them out it was not easy um i did manage to uh unbolt the crank and pull the crank to get it out of my way and the back of the bell housing here, when I mentioned earlier, I think it might have been the other video prior to this, I'm not sure. But the back of the bell housing here, the flywheel actually comes up around here. And that's why I was not able to unbolt the bell housing and pull it directly back. And the bolts on the crank for the uh, flywheel are actually on this side. And with it being seized, I was not able to spin the crank to get the bolts out. So, anyway, that's why it's mounted up the way it is on the engine stand. Try not to get you too dizzy here. But I'm going to continue to try to get these out. Um, I'm probably going to end up having to break the pistons, I would imagine. Because, you know, I've been using a block of wood and beating on it. And it's just not, not doing anything at the moment. So, anyway... Um, I'll get back with this, and as soon as I get a little farther along, I'll bring it back. All right, it's about a day later, and I went ahead and got the rest of the pistons out and the valves out off camera because they fought me tooth and nail. The pistons were seized in spot. Um, I literally had to take a bar from up underneath and wail on them to get them out they were really seized in that bad and the number six cylinder the piston was actually broke on top when i pulled the head off i didn't realize it till after i cleaned it up a little bit but uh, looking at the valve seats these things are just horrible so i'm not 100 percent sure if this motor is going to get rebuilt or i'll try to find another one i'm going to go talk to a, a guy down at the machine shop and get an idea I'm, I'm thinking i'm looking at least twenty five hundred dollars in machine work on this the crank is going to have to be turned um there's just a lot of work on this thing but anyway um here's one of the pistons i think this was the number six piston that came out and it is this is pretty typical of how they all are and they are just packed with rust and mud i don't even know what it is to be honest with you because I, I even soaked this with uh, BP Blaster for, for two days and it did absolutely nothing. 
Now the valves, every one of the valves were also stuck and I actually had to take my acetylene torch and heat up inside on the boss for the valve guides. Now the valve guide is still in there, but they're gonna get replaced also. But just to get the valves out, that's what I had to do. And hopefully it didn't hurt the block any. I don't think it did. But so anyway, uh, the next step is, well, actually, I still have to take the uh, freeze plugs out. I want to get them out, too. But the next step is I want to load it up, take it down to the machine shop, you know, have them assess it. You know, I don't see no visible cracks or nothing in it. But, you know, and an idea. And the problem is I'm not really finding an engine of this vintage. You know, really, I'm just not finding, especially at 230. And if you do, they want a fortune for it. So... You know, part of the fun is rebuilding it. So if I'm going to pay the same amount of money rebuilding it as buying it new, most cases, yeah, I'd go buy a new motor. But this here, I think I would kind of like to do it. I never did one of these flathead engines before. But that's where we're at. Um, and I'm not sure when I'll get it down to the machine shop. So um, you just have to stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel. And when, uh, when it comes back, I'll make another video and uh, post it up there. So, just want to say thanks for hanging out with me in the garage. Hit that like and subscribe button. See you.